Close your eyes, pay attention to your breath. Watch it as it comes in, watch it as it goes out. Notice if it's comfortable. You can try long breathing for a while to see how that feels, and then short breathing, see which is better. Fast, slow, heavy, light, deep or shallow. Experiment for a while to see what kind of breathing feels good now. As for any thoughts that go out, you just say no to them. This principle of restraint is a really important part of the practice. As the Buddha said, if you want a greater happiness, there are but you see that you have to give up some lesser forms of happiness in order to get the greater happiness. You should be willing to give up the lesser ones. Our problem is we want everything. We see this, this looks pretty, that looks good, this sounds nice. All kinds of things that are out there in the world. And if we're not careful, we miss out on bigger things, better things, because we go chasing after little things. So you have to learn some restraint. This is one of the themes that Ajahn Sawa would repeat many, many times. We're thinking of him today because it's almost 21 years now since he passed away. It'll be on April 5th that he passed away. And it's because of him that we have this place, this wonderful monastery where people can practice. So we think of him and we have gratitude toward him. And the best way to have gratitude, of course, or show your gratitude, is to follow with his teachings. And as I said, one of the things he talked a lot, a lot about was restraint. Both restraint about what comes out of you and restraint what comes into you, in terms of what comes out of you. He one time said the definition of a stupid person is someone who thinks of something they say and then just blurts it right out and doesn't stop to think, well, what are the consequences going to be? You're proud of the fact that you could think of something, and then it comes right out. You can do yourself a lot of harm. You can do a lot of harm to other people, too. So you have to stop and think before you say something. Ask yourself, where is this going to lead? What's this going to accomplish? And speak only things that will be useful. In other words, beneficial to you and beneficial to other people. If it's useful to you but it actually harms other people, that's not really beneficial to you in the long run. So stop and think. The same has to do, of course, with your actions. And even with your thoughts. You find your, your thoughts wandering away in some place they don't belong. You just, you just learn how to say no, like the Nike commercial, just say no. But learn how to say no effectively, because sometimes just saying no is not enough. You have to give them on reasons. And two of the ways of giving rise to reasons are developing a sense of shame and compunction. Shame has gotten a lot of bad press in our country over the past decades. But there are two kinds of shame. There's the shame that's the opposite of pride, and that's not what Ajahn Sawa would recommend. But then there's the shame that's the opposite of shamelessness. In other words, you don't care what other people think. You just want to do what you want to do, even when other people are right. You don't, give, you don't care at all. And that means that you're missing a big protection right there. You want to learn, learn how to look good in the eyes of the wise, learn how to look good in the eyes of the noble ones. All too often we want to look good in the eyes of the world, but the eyes of the world are cross-eyed sometimes. They see right as wrong and wrong as right. But the eyes of the noble ones, their vision is straight, straightforward. They see things for what they are, what's really valuable, what's not. So if you want to be proud of your actions, you should ask to look good in the eyes of the noble ones. And when you think of doing something or saying something, ask yourself, well, what would they say? What would they think? Because remember, there are people who have a lot of compassion for us, sometimes more compassion than we have for ourselves. Because we let ourselves do stupid things, and we don't care sometimes, but they see us do stupid things and it, it hurts them. They're sad to see that. So try to look good in the eyes of the wise. And that's one way you can gain some restraint, some wise restraint over your thoughts, words, and deeds. As for compunction, that's fear of the consequences of doing something that's going to be unskillful. This doesn't have anything to do with anybody else's eyes. It has to do with your own eyes and your own plans of the future. What kind of future are you creating for yourself? You don't want to create a future that's going to weigh you down with unnecessary pain. So if you have a temptation to do something unskillful or say it or think it, just say, no, this is not going to be good. Think about the long-term consequences, because as the Buddha said, that's the definition of wisdom. There's something you may want to say, but you know it's going to give bad consequences down the line, you learn how to make yourself not want to say it. 
something you particularly don't want to do, but you know it would give good results down the line. You talk yourself into wanting to do it. That's genuine wisdom. It's wisdom that makes a difference in your life. It's not just words, not just fancy concepts. It's the wisdom of someone who knows how to run his or her mind for your good. So that's how we keep some restraint over ourselves, as we learn how to develop a healthy sense of shame, a healthy sense of compunction. And that gives us good reasons for saying no. So you don't just have to say no. You say no, but you have reasons. And that way the mind is more and more willing to stay in line. And when it stays in line, it stays on the path, the path that goes to a good place. If it doesn't stay in line, it's going to go wandering off into the bush, and who knows where you're going to end up. So when we pay respect to the people who founded this place, John Sawat primarily, by practicing, we're also benefiting as well. Just as when the Buddha said, if you want to pay homage to him, practice in line with the Dharma. And as John Sawat said when he was staying with the John Mun, that was the theme that the John Mun would repeat many, many times. Practice the Dharma in line with the Dharma. And that's how you show respect and gratitude for those who have kept the Dharma alive and given us this opportunity to practice it.